internet. Hey everybody, let me know if uh, if you can see and hear us. Hopefully you can. Um, this is gonna be a little bit uh, more relaxed than our last couple of webinars. Uh, my name's Tyler Clary. I work with Fitter and Faster Tour and um, I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing. We've got Ben Lee here with us. And obviously you can see an endless pool behind us. And what we're gonna be doing today is just um, kind of talking about stroke and um, you know letting you guys kind of watch my stroke and we're going to try to um, show some of the things that we see a lot that happens in clinics that um, we'd like to improve upon. And I'll do my best to try to demonstrate those things. And then we'll try to show you some ways of fixing like head being too high and showing you the effects of that on body position, um, showing you what a crossover looks like and how to fix that, showing you what a bounce in backstroke looks like and how to fix that. We'll talk about a lot of different um, pull paths and stuff like these or stuff like that. Um, this is going to be anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. It's not going to be terribly long. Um, we're going to try to give you as, as best a view as possible from, uh, from me swimming in the pool. Um, and we'd love to, they say they can't hear us. Can, it, can anybody hear me? I want to know in chat, can you hear me? I know some of you are saying that you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Can anybody hear me at all? It's just so laggy, no sound. Oh, okay, some people can hear, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So again, this is just gonna be a backstroke demonstration. Um, I'm gonna try to show you again some of the things I've learned over, over the years as a swimmer. And um, let us know if you have any questions about sort of what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna be in the water, obviously, for the most part. And Coach Ben here is gonna be um, you know, near the computer kind of trying to talk about what he's seeing and what I'm working on. And we'll just see what you guys get out of this. So thanks for being here today. You guys are awesome. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop in the water and we'll get started. So Ben, talk to me a little bit about some of the things that you see happen quite regularly when it comes to um, younger backstroke swimmers and like some of the some of the habits that younger backstroke swimmers have that you might like to see fixed. Yeah, so head position and pull pattern are two really big things. Um, seeing the core release, which causes the head to bounce up and down as you're swimming the stroke. Um, seeing a lack of movement in the hips, driving that stroke. So when the arm's chopping in to set up that catch, it ends up bobbing up and down as it grabs water towards the bottom and then back towards the surface and then an overreach uh, towards center line. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, what I'm going to do, um, and let's try to get, so hit the button on the top right hand side of the screen there in the video feed to see if we get the other view. This is triangle? No. Yeah, oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, the four blue buttons, the left blue button, hit, hit the left blue button at the top. All right, cool. There we so, go. Hopefully you guys can see both of these views and I'm just going to swim along for 20 or 30 seconds and I want you guys to watch, you know, what I'm doing and Ben's going to turn up the speed a little bit and help me warm up a little. And then uh, I think one of the first things I want to start off showing you is um, what bad head position does to the stroke. So I'm going to just go ahead and start swimming and let you guys watch a little bit. So if you guys are noticing there, uh, he's really tilting that head back. He's letting his hips sag, and he's seeing that bounce in that stroke. One thing that he is doing really well is he's bringing his shoulder really close to his face, almost like rubbing his shoulders against the scruff of his, his beard there. Yeah, and that's actually, uh, you were talking about my shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I used to swim like really long backstroke sets. Like I used to swim like 10 300s or 10 200s, that kind of thing. And it was, I always knew I was doing a good job with my recovery by what my shoulders did 
after my set was over. So I, I have really, uh, really rough facial hair and I get lazy and I don't shave my face every day. And in college, I used to rub myself raw on the shoulders by constantly bringing my arm right up to my face and then scooting it past my face and allowing my hand to drop into the proper position. So if I got to the end of a practice and I wasn't like bleeding right here, I knew that I needed uh, to work a little bit more on that. But this is something that you can use as a cue for yourself. You know, we talked about crossover earlier and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but by getting your shoulders up to your head, you can really, really help out yourself in getting rid of a crossover and allowing your own body to dictate where your hand actually enters in the water. So what I wanna do right now, and I think this other view is pretty good, so what I want to do right now is show you what happens when you pick your head up to look towards your feet. So obviously I'm going to be swimming in that direction. And what I'm actually going to do is pick my head up and look at the camera. And I want you to look from this, from this view at what that does to my hips. And I think this view is really going to let you see what's happening to my hips. Okay. So I'm going to start out with a couple of strokes in proper head position, and then I'm going to pick my head up and just watch what that does to my hips. So this is proper head position. Now I'm picking my head up to look at my feet and you should see pretty clearly that my hips are about a foot underwater. Now, one way to fix this, some people might say, just look up at the sky. But there's a different way I have to think about it. And it was a guy named Bill Jewell that I worked with when I was in, uh, in high school who told me to imagine having a rope that's tied from your nose to your belly button. So if I would look down at my feet, that rope is gonna have a lot of slack to it. So actually, can you hand me my towel for a second? So imagining that this is our rope, if this is connected properly, then there's a lot of tension in the rope. But if I point my head towards my, my nose toward my toes, there's a lot of slack in the rope now. So what I want people to imagine is that as they pull back on their head, they're trying to pull their belly button up towards the surface using that rope. So I'll show you what that looks like a little bit going from a bad body position into a better body position and then show you another drill that you can use to work on that. So I'm going to start out looking at my feet and I'm going to use that rope to bring my hips up to the surface and just watch the difference. The hips are nice and low. Now I'm not going to change anything other than using that rope. Now you should see very clearly that my hips came right up to the surface. Now I'm going to try just a kicking drill. Can you slow it back down to like 115 or, or a little bit higher. Now I'm going to do just a kicking drill. So what I'm going to do, and I call this seesaw drill, I'm going to have my hands at my sides. I'm going to be just flutter kicking. Then I'm going to look at my toes and I'm going to force my hips to sink. So when I look, my hips are going to sink and I'm going to cause that to happen. And then I'm going to sit here for just a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to use that rope to try to pick my head up and bring my hips to the surface. Now, a really important piece here, Tyler, if you can turn sideways again. So notice when he looked down at his toes and he let his hips sink. So hinge at the waist. There you go. When he's lifting back up, he's still maintaining control in his core as he's lengthening that rope. Notice how his back still stays flat. So he's not overarching not, that back. I'm not doing this. To stick his belly button towards the sky. So I'm keeping my core engaged. It's a great point. So I'm going to hop in. I'm going to do that seesaw drill again. My hands are going to be at my side. I'm just going to be doing flutter kick. And I'm going to get into a bad position. And I'm just going to use that rope that's attached to my nose and my belly button to bring my hips up to the surface. So bad body position. You can tell, I think, by this other camera view that my hips are pretty low. Now I'm just going to use that imaginary rope. And you should now see my stomach right up at the surface. And right as he comes up, he starts looking more like he's in the Slow position of a ship bit. or a banana boat. He's starting to hollow out. So again, so looking I, at the I'm feet. Horrible body position right now. And then just using that head, 
to pull back on that rope and bring my hips right up to the surface. So that's probably one of the most basic drills that I used to do with seesaw drill. And even when I was at the later part of my career, that was one of the first drills I always used to do when I got in the water. So I would get in, swim a little bit of freestyle. If I was really trying to work on my backstroke, I wanted to make sure my body position was in line first. Now, I think some of you who are on this webinar have seen me use like a, a hairspray bottle to explain how and why we position our body a certain way, right? Let us know in chat if you've seen me use that hairspray bottle. It'll take them 10 or 15 seconds or so. But the idea is, is you want to pierce through the water. You don't want to plow through the water. So this drill is quite simply a way to lessen the amount of water resistance or drag on your body as you swim. So we're going to do a little progression now where we go into adding some rotation. So here, hold on. Someone's spamming. Here, go back. Here, let me see. Hang on, hang on. Okay, cool. All right. Not that big of a deal. All right, so we're going to do a progression now where I'm going to go from this position into a rotation. So backstroke is actually a bad name for the stroke because on backstroke, you're actually very rarely on your back. Most of the time, you're actually rotating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a couple of drills where, or a couple of reps on the seesaw drill where I'm picking my head up and allowing my hips to sink and then bringing my hips up to the surface. I'm going to do this twice, slow and controlled. And then I'm going to start adding some rotation. And what you should see is that my head's not going to rotate with my upper body. I'm going to keep my head as still as I can get it. So I'm going to do two sit-ups. And then I'm going to rotate my body as far to the left side as I can get it and come back with control all the way to the right side. I'm going to do that twice. What you might notice is when I get all the way onto my left side, that I'm not actually going to be able to keep my hips right up at the surface as well as I will on my back, which is natural. But you can fight that by using that rope connection a little bit more and allowing your head to counteract your hips. So we'll see what that looks like. So bad position, hips are low. Then bringing the head back, pull in on that rope, getting the hips right to the surface. And then again, bad position, hips are really low. And getting back up to the surface once again. I'm going to rotate over, trying to keep my head up still. And you'll notice that my hips tend to sink just a little bit. But I'm still staying right in the middle of the pool, activating my core, and keeping it under control. Ben, do you have any thoughts about that? The cross core connection there is super important for him because as he's rotating through, he's still in front of the camera and talk to him. As he's rotating through, he's still maintaining control in that lower band of his abs. Because if he lets go right there, the first thing that happens is his back starts to arch as he's staying up. But as he's rotating, he's staying engaged from his rib cage down and holding that belly button to that spine. Yeah, for sure. So I want to talk a little bit about how the way in which we pull through the water. So I want to actually get out for a second and look at what people are saying. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and the side, Christy, the side angle is probably going to be the best for what we're about to show you yeah. here. Well, Christy Korshnack said, what would happen if you put your head back all the way? And that's kind of a funny question. I'm going to show you what that looks like just for fun. Hopefully he brought a nose plug. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. So this is what it looks like if you have your head too far back. <laughs> so that really doesn't give you any advantage. So why would you do that? You wouldn't, right? And again, if you think about your body like a torpedo, you want that body to just pierce through the water. So if your head is too high and you're looking at your toes, that's going to cause your body to arch like this or angle like this, and you'll be plowing through the water. But if your head is all the way back like it was just now, 
the opposite will be true. And now you're going to be plowing through the water this way. So thank you for that question. That was a really fun one to do. Um, what? You stand in the middle of the, uh, the pool. So one of the things I love about working with an endless pool is that it's really forgiving, but it's also really unforgiving in the sense that it really highlights all the things you're doing well and accentuates that, or it really, really takes everything and reveals your weaknesses. So if you'll stand uh, facing me and just lightly hold this band right in the middle of this flowing channel. So everybody can see this flowing channel. Basically, an endless pool works by having the water push out the middle from this motor back here, and then it recirculates along the side. And when your body's swimming through the pool and moving through the water, it's creating the same vortice. So in this perfect body line right now, the water is just flowing right under. It's having no resistance at all. But you can see the minute he starts to dip, either one section on the back, so simulating his head, or if he lets go of his core, or if he lets his feet really drop down, he starts to create a lot of that drag resistance. And that water starts swirling. Can you push the middle down too? Just push the middle. So it's swirling around in the middle. Can everybody see that? And so that's the importance behind kind of a visual representation of why it's important to have a good body line. Yeah, very, very good. Awesome tool. Thank you. So anytime we coach a new stroke, we always try to talk about the basic body position, right? A lot of times swimmers can get to a point where they're only focused about the pull or they're only focused about the kick. And in my opinion, if you set up the body position right, you can have an average pull or you can have an average kick. But if you have a good body position and you swim against somebody who has a great pull and a great kick, but a terrible body position, you're always going to beat them because water's really, really thick. And if you have a good body position, you're not going to have as much drag to work against you. So let, let us know in chat if that makes sense. So while we're waiting for some of those responses to come in, there's usually like a 10 or 15 second delay. Um, we're going to start talking a little bit about the way in which we pull in backstroke, okay? And there's a lot of different things that you can do, and there are a lot of different things that we can see as clinicians and coaches that tell us what's going on. But before we get to there, I want to talk about how we pull through the water. So I want to hear from you guys in chat if you guys know what the word acceleration means, okay? I ask, I ask this at almost every one of my backstroke clinics. What does acceleration mean? And I'm going to give away the answer because you guys are a little bit behind me. <laughs> but what acceleration basically means is when something gets faster over time. So in pretty much every stroke, you always want your pull to be accelerating. So in breaststroke, you want to be accelerating through here. In freestyle, you want to be accelerating your hands back. In backstroke, when I catch and pull, I don't just want to pull with a constant hand speed. I actually want to accelerate my hands towards my toes. So what I'm going to do is double arm backstroke or elementary backstroke. Some of you guys might know it that way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate two double arm backstroke pulls at a constant hand speed. And you'll see what that looks like. And then I'm going to do two accelerating hand speed pulls. And you'll also see what that looks like. And by doing that, using this endless pool, which is just going to give us a constant speed of water, you should be able to see very quickly and very clearly which of those methods of pulling gives me more power. Okay, so when I come over here, I'm gonna be swimming right here. If I, run, if I do this drill at a constant hand speed, I should pretty much stay in the same spot. I shouldn't really try to swim ahead of the machine. But when I switch over to doing my two accelerating hand pulls, you should notice that I surge towards the front of the machine just a little bit, and that should tell you which one is faster, okay? What's the speed at? Uh, it's at 109. So notice how his hands are just moving really evenly right now. Now as he surges, you can see how his head starts to move up closer and closer to the bar. He's back to his nice steady pull. He's just staying in place. And you can see him surging again. Now I want you to show them, in addition to those two, can you show them one where you over-accelerate and you actually slip and lose water? Sure, sure. 
Um, what are they saying in chat? Makes sense. Okay, Someone cool. Gave the so people of acceleration. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You guys are great. Keep it up. Um, so what Ben was just asking me to do, so I'll do that same drill again. I'll do two constant speed hand pulls, and then I'll do two accelerating hands hand pulls at the right amount of acceleration. And then I'll do two where I'm really trying to rip through the water, and you'll notice that I'm actually going to start slipping. And even though it's going to look faster than the first two strokes, it's not going to push me as far forward in the pool as the first two strokes. Let's look, check out what that looks like. And for the side view, guys, um, one thing to really pay attention to is to notice whether his hand's wobbling through the pole or if it's just holding steady and moving down towards his leg. You see that little wobble through there where he misses that water. You can actually see the splash come up where he missed some water because he wasn't holding steady and just working with the water and letting it be his friend. So could everybody see that difference? Let me know in chat if you could see that difference. I think that'd be really interesting. Um, and while we're waiting for you guys to chat with us a little bit, um, let's talk a little bit about crossover, okay? Um, crossover is something where it's a word that we use for when somebody enters in the water past their, line, past their center line. So if you were to imagine there was a line drawn all the way down the center of my body and that extended through the top of my head, you don't ever want to enter on the opposite side. And if you were to look at my body kind of like it was a clock, so if this is 12 o'clock, this is 3 o'clock, and this is 9 o'clock, you really want to be entering right about 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock, kind of like this. So what I'm going to do is swim a little bit of backstroke where I'm purposefully crossing over on this side. And you should be able to see from this view that I'm actually going to fishtail through the water. I'll do that for about six to eight strokes. And then all I'm going to do is change the position of my shoulder. So most of the time, people don't bring their shoulder up to their face like we were talking about earlier. Remember when I was telling you that my shoulders used to get red and kind of bloody right here? So most people don't do that. They just keep their shoulder sort of relaxed and away from their head, and it creates a little bit of space right here. And that makes it very easy for you to cross over. But if I shrug my shoulder up to my face like this, it becomes very difficult to actually cross over if I have a straight arm because my head is blocking that from happening. So let's just watch and see what that looks like. And again, from that side view angle, this should be pretty easy to see, guys, because the endless pull will make him ping pong back and forth. So from the front view, you can kind of see him snaking back and forth. From the side view, you can see how he's pushing water from left to right and right to left, which is not helping him in his forward movement of travel. So now he's starting to bring his shoulder up to his cheek. And I actually have to pick up the pace just a little bit here because he's moving pretty well. So, yeah, so you started moving so well at the end there that I had to pick up the pace on the motor so that you didn't run past the bar. Right. And the idea is, um, and I, I'm not, I think they heard that, but so the way this thing works is that Ben has the controls. Coach Ben right here has the controls for the speed of the machine in his hand. So, so it's he's basically able to like very, a treadmill. It's exactly like a treadmill for swimmers. And what he had to do just then was while I was swimming improperly and I was crossing over, the machine was at a certain speed. And then I started swimming properly and he actually had to speed the machine up so I didn't hit the front of it. And that tells you right away that swimming without a crossover is much, much faster than swimming with a crossover, obviously. But this shows you that very clearly. Can you give him a visual right here? So earlier while you were swimming, I was talking to them about pulling left and right and just paint. that's why you were ping-ponging back and forth exactly. versus moving water towards your feet. Can you give them just a different angle? So if I'm swimming with a crossover, for the first part of the stroke, I'm actually pushing outward and then I'm pushing down. But if I'm entering my hand at the one o'clock position, all I have to do is pull down towards my feet. So in swimming, it's a very, very simple equation. If I'm trying to swim that way, I want to be pushing in the exact opposite direction the whole time. How many people are in there? Uh, 248. Nice. So again, 
if I'm trying to swim, imagine I'm on my back right now and I'm trying to swim directly up. What good does pulling this way do for me? It doesn't do anything or except for pushing me that way. So if I'm going to push that way, then my body is naturally going to go the opposite way. But if I get really good at pulling straight down, then my body only wants to go in the forward direction, and that's what we want. So another way to think about this is we can talk about the bounce in a backstroke. So a lot of people have what I call a bouncy backstroke, and you can see some people who kind of, you know, bounce with their head up and back like this. And the same basic thing is going on. So what they're doing is they're entering with their hand facing backwards, and they're actually pushing down which is causing their head to push up. So what I'm gonna do right now is swim backstroke with pulling down in the very beginning of my stroke instead of pulling backwards the way I'm supposed to. And you can watch my head bob up and down. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this or even do this themselves. So watch what that looks like and we'll talk again about what that's do, what's going on and how to fix that. Some of you guys might have noticed that as he was demonstrating on land as well, his core became disconnected every time he bounced. And you can see this in the water. So his upper body is moving, but his hips are moving independently of his shoulders right now. So you can tell very clearly that when I'm up at the top of my stroke and I'm purposely pulling down towards the bottom of the pool, it's causing my head to come up out of the water. And again, we want to go forward, or in this case, up, right? We don't want to be going up and out of the water. We want to go, be going forward and down the pool. So the way to fix that is quite simple. If you think about entering with your pinky first and allowing, so imagining you're, uh, you're looking at the side of my stroke right now, as soon as your hand comes in the water, you want to be facing the palm towards your feet. Now tell me in chat real quick, what does this look like to you guys right now? What does this look like? If I'm swimming freestyle, that should look very, very familiar. So backstroke is really similar to freestyle in that the start of my pull looks a heck of a lot like the beginning of, of, uh, of a backstroke, or excuse me, of a freestyle stroke. Another thing to think about is that you're not just trying to point your palm towards the bottom of, or towards your, your uh, feet, you're also trying to point this whole surface. So you're not just pulling with your hand anymore. We need to be talking about pulling with our forearm as well. So he's creating a massive paddle that spans all the way from his fingertips all the way to his elbow. Exactly. And again, pay attention to the side view here. Really lightly with my pinky. And here I'll actually hold on. So I'm entering with my pinky and then rotating my hand to face my feet and using my whole forearm to pull the water. So notice how even he stays in relationship to the surface of the water. He's grabbing and he's pushing all that force straight down towards his feet. So a lot of times what we see as coaches and as clinicians is we see this up big and S down pattern. big S pattern. And that's creating more of that pushing of the water down towards the bottom, which is pushing your body back up to the surface. And then when you come back up, now your body drops back down. And Tyler did a really nice job just holding in that same static location and then moving it straight across. Okay, so um, I had a couple of people asking about core and how you keep your core together when you're rotating through. And what you're okay, doing so like the, in your chest. the core, the core part of backstroke is an interesting thing. So a coach of mine told me a long time ago that you should always be swimming backstroke imagining somebody's hitting you in the stomach. So what? Is that like kind of the same thing that yeah. you teach? Yeah. So you always imagine that you're trying to uh, swim backstroke while you're getting hit in the stomach. And basically what that does from the side, most swimmers I see swimming backstroke have, you know, this curve to their, their body like this. But if somebody's about to punch me in the stomach, I'm naturally going to tighten up my stomach. And you see how that flattens out my lower back. So the whole time I'm swimming with a tight core. And then another thing to think about is that your hips actually lead, in my case, not everybody's this way, but my hips actually lead my shoulders through the stroke. So to show you on land what that looks like, and you guys can actually practice this at home, even if you don't have an endless pool or a pool that you can um, train with, 
is to hold your arms out to the side, tilt your hips one way, and let your, your shoulders follow. And then when you get to the side, tilt your hips back the other way and use your hips to pull your arms to the other side. So this is a drill that you can do on land to let your hips lead your shoulders. So what I'm gonna do right now is get back in the water and really try to get my hips up to the surface as much as I can. And using that side view, I want you to try and see the fact that I'm rotating my hips first and letting my upper body follow my hips. So notice that once I start my pull, my hips are already headed back in the other direction and they're pulling my upper body across to the other side. So let's see what that looks like. That's a really important point just because you, you look at the size of his arms and you look at the size of his torso and his core, which one do you want doing the work? So we're over at 58 pace now. We've had to drop it another seven seconds, and he's still just running through the bar because he's. <laughs> so, a beast. But this is such an important point. So, like, you can have the strongest arms in the world, you can have the strongest legs in the world, and you can be the best in the world at pulling and the best in the world at kicking. But if you don't have the ability to connect across your body, so when I'm pulling on my right arm. I'm kicking with my left leg and I have to connect across my core to get that connection to happen. And the same thing for the other side, when I'm pulling, I'm starting my catch with my left arm, I'm kicking with my right leg and I'm crossing my, it's called a cross body connection. Ben, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Can we have you um, come out? I'm going to hold the camera here for a second and can you get into a uh, dead bug position? Okay. So, you know, bend at the knees and then tuck your toes towards your shins. Yep, good. Arms straight towards the surface. So one of the big misconceptions about engaging core is that dead bug requires that you keep your back entirely flat on the ground. You can't okay? do anything. So on here. show them what an arch looks like. So okay? now you can get your hand. You can get a hand back. or right. So what you want to do is I should be able to tuck a piece of paper right under his back. If he's sucking his belly button down and gluing his back down, should be able to pull on it as hard as I can and not be able to pull it out. Now, one of the hardest things to do though is it's really easy to hold this dead bug but still have the belly pushed up because you're not engaging the lower part of the core. Right. And truly to hold it well in that cross core connection when you're going one stroke into the next as he extends is you have to suck that lower part of the belly button down, pretend like someone's hitting you right at that crease of that suit line. So he's extending out and he's holding that position. So one of the challenges, um, and keep that pointed down for a second because I want people to, sure. to see, but one of the challenges that I think you guys can work on at home is to uh, start out in that basic dead bug position and work on getting your core sucked in to get your lower back nice and close to the ground. So the first thing you would do is start out with your legs up like this and your hands up with your core relaxed and you can see under my back right now and then you should just get used to trying to bring your stomach in to your back and paste your lower back against the floor and then to make that harder you would actually here let me blow this up the next progression would be to go from here and learning again how to get your lower back on the ground so did you see that subtle engagement that he just made there so i'm just i'm pulling my rib cage in I'm trying to suck my up. belly button into the stomach and I'm rotating my hips back just a little bit. And then as you get better at this, you can start to extend your legs and arms until you get to here. And notice that my lower back is still, still nice and close to the ground. But if you get to here and you notice that your lower back pops off the ground, then bring it back to your basic dead bug position and get used to extending and keeping that lower back on the ground. And as you get better and better at this, you can get lower and lower and lower with your arms and legs until a point where hopefully you can get your hands and legs all the way to the ground and still keep your lower back on the ground just like that so let's see here that ripped dead bug <laughs> all right so um i have a couple of questions for you guys is there anything 
that you want to see me doing in backstroke. It could be, let's see how fast you can go. It could be, I want to see a specific drill. Um, let us know what you want to see from us. Cause really this is the first time we're doing this. And really what I want is to give you guys what you think will be the most helpful. So let me know what you guys want. Yeah. We're really hoping that this is interactive, at least as interactive as it can be on a chat. Yeah. So uh, I see sprint backstroke. I see kick uh, world record pace. I can't do that right now. I'm old and out of shape. Um, people want to see how fast I can go. So I, I tell you what, Right before we finish up, I promise I'll go as fast as I can, and Ben will probably pace me to the back of the machine. Um, Sadly, it's only 51-yard so, 100 pace is <laughs> all this thing goes to. So every, everybody wants to see how fast I can go. So I promise you guys we will do that. But let's, um, let's talk about the kick a little bit, I guess. That's a good question. So what I'll do is I'll get in the water, and I'll have my hands at my side, and then I'm gonna kick in two very distinct ways. So I'll start first by kicking from my, from my knees and showing you guys what that looks like. And then I'll show you a more proper kick where I'm trying to keep my knee relatively straight and I'm trying to lead with my hip, kind of like the crack of a whip. So I'll kick along for, um, here, can you lift the camera up just a little bit? So I'm gonna kick along just for like 10, 15 seconds, bending from my knee as much as I can and then, like I said, I'm going to try to kick more properly with a more straight leg because, again, when we kick, just like with the pull, we're not just pulling with our hands. We're trying to pull with this whole surface right here or this way. We're trying to pull with this whole surface right here. If I'm just kicking with my, with my knee, I'm really only kicking with the top of my foot. But if I keep my leg straighter, I'm actually able to use the whole front of my leg to kick. So we'll see what that looks like. Okay, you want to talk to me too? Yep. Notice when he's only kicking from his knees, he's actually just moving water up and down. Now he's starting to get a little more flexible. He's driving through his hips, bringing his toes, and he's pointing his toes close to each other. I don't know if you guys can see that from the top down view, but he's pointing and dangling his toes in. So another way to think about the kick is to imagine, like, let's say you were take, to take a hula hoop that was relatively small, about this big. So that hula hoop should just barely fit around my shoulders if I was to kick like this. Now, if you look at me from the side, the kick, you don't ever want it to come out of the channel that's about this wide. So if I'm kicking it from my knees, you can actually see it quite clearly that if I'm kicking from my knees, my foot back here is causing all sorts of drag. Yeah, there's a lot of drag just coming right out of this whole entire plane. Exactly. Whereas if I'm kicking with a straighter leg and my kick is only about this wide, I'm staying within the line of my body. So I'm helping myself go fast without slowing myself down very much. And that's something to understand about the best swimmers in the world is that, yes, they're very fast, but they've learned how to slow down the least. And that's a really, really important thing to understand. So, oh yeah, side view. So I'll show you the same thing here. My hands are wet. So we'll show you the side view, sorry about that. We'll do the exact same thing and hopefully the, uh, side view unfreezes there it goes there we go okay. i'll show you the exact same thing and you should be able to see very clearly uh if you guys can use the, the camera to maybe point towards my feet a little bit you notice he's got the drag pushing right against the back of his leg all the way into his feet and then as he starts to bring it up now he's getting into that tighter space So go back to your knee kick, go back, go into a fast kick, and then drop back into a knee kick. Yeah, so gonna I'm going to go into the normal kick at this speed, and I should stay right here in the center of the pool. And then I'm going to go into the elbow or the knee kick where I'm dropping my feet really low, and you're going to start seeing me get outspeeded by the machine. So watch what this looks like. So this is pretty the easy. Of his hands and My hands are about uh, about a foot away from the top of the machine. 
Now I'm going to drop my ankles. Notice how he has to fight <laughs> this is now. Way he start trying to almost break the surface. Everything starts to break down in his core, and his line, it just starts to sag. So again, I'll start out improperly. So I'm, el I'm knee kicking, but now I'll just bring my feet into line, and now I can start out swimming the machine. As he's doing that, you can see his core start to tighten up, he's starting to tuck that rib cage down. He's also starting to tuck the hips back up as well. Yep. So. Someone else talked a little bit or asked about the uh, depth of the pull. So this kind of goes in line with how the S pull works and how a straighter pull works. So when I started swimming, I was told to pull with what they call an S pattern. So I would pull down, I would pull up, and then I would finish kind of deep. So again, it'd be down and then up and then down. And I've since learned that that's not the best way to try and pull. What I've learned is, is to try to pull directly opposite the direction you're trying to go. So what that means is, is again, I'm trying to get my hand about two or three inches under the surface of the water, and I'm just trying to pull straight back downwards. So let me see, I'll try and swim right about here. But you'll notice, that as soon as my hand gets up here, once my elbow gets in the water, I'm already trying to pop my hand back to face it towards my feet. And I'm not going any deeper than about that far underwater. So let's just watch the pull nice and slow. Can you slow the machine down just a little more? So they can do it really, really slow. Notice how he patiently sets up, finds that pressure, feels it, and then just moves it down towards the feet. Now, even if you don't have an endless pool at your house, this is something that you can easily do in just a bathtub, just something where there's a body of water. So Tyler, I just want you to stand right here in the middle. Just fill up, you know, you just want to fill up about this much water, guys. And Take your hand and just lightly put it under the surface and start to move it in a direction, feeling that pressure on the pinky, on the ring finger. Now I want you to turn that hand forward so the thumb's facing a little bit forward, your hand's facing towards the bottom of the pool. And now try that same motion. Just start to feel how your hand starts to knife through the water as it kind of skates and wobbles through there. And so you can play with this at home even while you're not in the pool of training right now and just develop that body awareness and just learn what that feels like to hold pressure. All right, cool. Well, we've been, uh, we've been at this for almost 45 minutes. So let's finish up with something a little bit more fun that's definitely going to make me tired and out of breath. What we're going to do is, what, like three or four different attempts at different paces and just see how long I can hold it. And you guys will see a little bit better what my actual speed, my actual like race type stroke looks like. <laughs> Keep in mind, I've been out of competitive swimming now for almost four years, so no judgment. Um, after we finish up with that, I'll go ahead and hop out of the water, put a towel on, and um, we'll try to answer any other questions that you guys have before we wrap the session up. So um, where do you want to start? So we'll start at a 110. Okay. Let's start at like 105. Let's go down by in five second increments. How about okay. that? Good. So we're gonna start out at a 105 pace. So this is 100, uh, one minute, five seconds per 100 yards or meters? 100 yards. Okay. So this is what a 105 100 yard backstroke looks like for my stroke. So again, notice how he's bringing his shoulders right up to his cheek. Setting that pinky in the water, immediately getting that hand turned towards his feet, connecting the fingertips to the elbow, moving that water straight down. Picking from the hips, holding a really nice line. I'm going to drop it down to a double low now. So now we're going to one double low for a 100 yard backstroke. We'll see if I can you know, keep up that with that for a while. All right, one double low. Got that old man power. Let's 
So that was also pretty easy. I'm not that out of shape. Um, so at 55, we probably want you to swim a little bit more in the middle just so we're not spitting water out the back too hard. A little more like right here? Yeah. Okay. All right. 55. Really nice still head position. It means that it's for staying engaged cross forward as you transition. Notice how his hip is always flipping over before his arm starts to move to set up. Is it side view so it is? Yeah, it is. Maybe, uh, can you blow up the side view? What? Oh. Sorry, guys. There's, uh, it's, uh not our music. There's actually a local DJ here that's playing music next door, so sorry about that. But hopefully you guys can get through that and watch some. Uh, so this is the fastest the machine goes, right? Yeah, this is 51. So this is 51 seconds for 100 freestyle, back 100 backstroke. Let's see what that looks like. See where he locks in the minute he gets over. And that's an area that we see a lot of younger swimmers release. You set up the core really well when you transition to set up that catch. And then the minute you start holding water, that core releases, and then that also creates a bounce. And Tyler's done a really nice job still holding it together. Oh, he switched to free. He's still got it. Oh, he's crazy. All right. You're going to see some fresh jerk at that pace? No. <laughs> All right, go ahead and kill the machine, and then blow up, uh, minimize that screen. So hopefully that side view is helpful for you guys. What we were talking about was how every time you set up and started to feel that pressure at the top of that catch, did a really nice job still keeping that lower part of the core engaged, and how a lot of times it's really easy to start to let go there, and that also creates a bounce. For sure. All right, well, let me hop out. Get my towel on, and then if any of you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask them. So let's blow this up again. All right. So I'll just sit here. Side view is helpful. Awesome. Can we do a summary review of the stuff that we taught? Yes. Okay. So... Here, I'll sort of kneel down, I guess. So what we did to start off was the what I call the seesaw drill. And that was keeping your hands at your side and then looking down at your toes and causing your hips to sink and then imagining that rope connection between your, your belly button and your nose and trying to pull up on that rope connection to get your hips to come back up. So that was the first thing. Uh, there was a question, can you do the same thing but with other strokes next time? So next week, you guys, we're going to do a freestyle episode of this. You're also, uh, the following week, we're going to do a breaststroke episode. And then the following week, we're going to do a butterfly episode. So keep and then that Tyler's going to do a modified 4 a.m. for time in the endless pool. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's been a long time since I had to swim a 4 a.m. of any kind. But so, again, the first drill was that seesaw drill. And then the second drill was to do a combination of the seesaw drill where I lifted up and back a couple of times, got my body position set, and then I started to rotate all the way over on my side, keeping my head nice and still. And I would do that several times and just go through that progression of two seesaw drills and then two, uh, two rotations. And okay. the important part to, think, to remember there is that there's constant pressure for that string or rope that's uh, tied from his nose to his belly button because if he's jerky with that motion he's going to break that rope or string in half and that throws off his balance so he's just applying even pressure and holding that static position yeah and then so after we talked about the uh the seesaw drill and then the rotation we started to talk a little bit about the way to pull through the water so i did what they call elementary backstroke or double arm backstroke 
where I did two arm pulls where I was pulling through the water at what I call a constant hand speed, which means that my hand didn't change speed from the top to the bottom of the pull. So it was the same speed the whole way. It, was, it may have been changing direction, but my hand wasn't changing speed. Then what I did, so I did two strokes with a constant hand speed, and then I did two strokes accelerating my hands towards my feet. You guys were able to see very clearly that, you know, say this is the top of the machine right here. When I was doing the constant hand speed, I wasn't really changing my position relative to the front of the machine. But if I started to accelerate my hands towards my feet while I was pulling, you were actually able to see me charging towards the front of the machine. And that tells you that that's faster. Okay. Um, what else did we do after that? Shoulders. Yeah, we started talking about the crossover. Good, good. Uh, we started talking about the crossover. So what I like to tell people is when they recover, they should get their shoulder out of the water and then they should try to squeeze a playing card. Imagine you've got the ace of spades, like, you know, from, from cards. You're trying to hold that ace of spades between your shoulder and your face the whole time you're recovering. And then when you get to vertical, that shoulder is actually gonna rotate past your ear. So it'll look a little bit like this. It'll rotate past your ear and then your arm will continue to fall into the water. And from the front view, the reason why that's important is that by pushing that shoulder past your head, it actually allows your arm to fall right into the proper position to start pulling right away. So we talked about the crossover. Again, you don't ever want your hand to pull over here because then you're just going to pull this way, which is going to make my body go this way. I want to go that direction. So I want to always make sure I'm pulling the exact opposite direction. Okay. So we talked about the crossover and we talked about a bounce. So what I tried to do was actually push downwards. So from a side view, that would have looked like I was pushing downwards and then starting to pull down. And what that was causing was my head to bounce up. So for every force, there's an equal and opposing force, right? So if I'm pulling downwards towards the bottom of the pool, my body wants to go up towards the ceiling. So instead of pulling down, you again, can you tilt the camera up just a little bit? Instead of pulling downwards, as soon as your pinky enters the water, you want your elbow to point towards the bottom of the pool and you want to point your palms towards your feet and you want to use this whole surface Notice how to pull connected straight he is backwards. There. So he's not just breaking at the You're wrist here, he's, he's holding everything together. Everything's held together, very good. So again, um, a one good drill that you guys can use um, while you're out of the pool is a mirror. So I'm able to use this camera a little bit like a mirror. I can see it down here, obviously the camera's up here. But what you can do is go stand in front of the mirror and look at, at the side of your body, allow your body to rotate and try to create this position and then imagine you're pulling like your hand had a pole stuck through it that points all the way towards your feet. And you can use that looking at the mirror just like this to train your body while you're even out of the water. Once you get back in the pool, because guys, at some point, this is going to be over. We're going to get back in the pool. And one of the drills that I used to use in training was actually to use uh, the lane line. I used to pull on the lane line like crazy. Let us know in chat if you've ever pulled on the lane line in backstroke. But you can actually use that as a really nice drill. So everybody knows that the lane ropes have like a cable and then they've got all those plastic buoys on them. So what I used to try to do is grab the, the buoys with my hand and pull the buoys straight down the lane rope without moving the lane rope. And admittedly, when I started doing this, I was just trying to pull on the lane line without letting my coach know. But it turned out to be really, really good because I got really, really efficient at pulling straight downwards. So that's something that you guys can use when we get back in the pool. So let's... Uh... And one of the things, as you're looking into that mirror, I like to challenge athletes to think about what parts of their body they're feeling activation in. Meaning, as I'm setting up my hand up here, am I feeling my lats um, engage? Am I feeling my belly button get sucked towards my spine? If I'm not feeling that, you know, why am I being loose or what do I need? Those are things that can give you some really good awareness to give you keywords to take with you when you go back into the pool. So as you're setting up your practice and your warm up, or as you're going through a drill and a swim, now you can pay attention to whether those things are happening. So, um, 
I'm going to end with uh, with two things. Okay, uh, perfect. I'm going to end with two things. So one person asked me, "What should be? What should you be doing when you first get back in the pool?" And my response to that is body position, body position, body position. Okay, so focus on that body position, especially the seesaw drill, making sure you're getting your hips nice and close to the surface. Ideally, you should have this whole surface of your body just about that far above the water. Now, it doesn't have to be arched like this. You want everything to stay connected, but basically this whole surface of your body right in the front should be just a half an inch above the surface of the water. And then the second thing is another body position related drill that we did at the very beginning is just learning how to rotate without moving your head. A lot of people I see do backstroke where they're kind of like flopping their head side to side. And you can kind of see even while I'm sitting on this chair is that as I flop my head to the one side, my hips pop this way. And if I flop my head to the other side, my hips pop the other way. And what that's going to cause you to do is literally go fishtail through the water. And we know that the, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Like this distance is not the shortest distance, to, or this line is not the shortest distance that you can get from one side of the pool to the other. You want to go straight there. And by having a head position that's very, very still, you can get that straight line. So one thing you can do is you can take like a, like a cup and you can put it right here on, the, on the, your forehead, right above your goggles. Now, don't put it up here on the top of your head because that's going to cause this position. You want to keep it on your forehead so it encourages a good position. And what you should do is just try kicking to the opposite side of the pool with a rotation without dropping that cup. And if you get really good at it, you can start to swim with the cup on your forehead and get from one side of the pool to the other. Now, if you're paying really close attention, you'll see that his neck actually lengthened as though someone had a string on the top of his head yep. and just kind of grabbed him by the cuff and just lifted yep. him up. Pulling that, so the, and that's another really good point. You're always trying to lengthen your line. The longer you can make your body, the better. So everybody's seen that like characteristic swimmer slouch, right? But we're not going to swim backstroke like this. We want to swim backstroke with as straight a line as we can get. So you should also work on lengthening out in front of a mirror. So if you're standing in front of a mirror, just kind of slouched, imagine that again, you're pull being pulled from the very top of your head. And I want you to get good at trying to make yourself as long and as narrow as possible. It's something really good to work on from home. Okay. So we're going to cut the uh, webinar off here. Um, Y'all were great. Thank you very much for uh, bearing with us. This is the first time we've done something like this. Um, let us know in chat if you guys liked it and if you want us to come back next week and do some freestyle. Um, you can, you're going to get emailed a replay of this video in about two hours. And um, that'll take you back to our website. and You'll be able to watch everything that we did today. And if you go to fitterandfaster.com slash replays, you can see all of our replays of all of our past webinars. You can also go to fitterandfaster.com slash live, and that's going to show you all of our upcoming webinars. I think we have eight or nine that we're going to be doing next week. Um, holy crap. All right, William Hoover, knock off the spamming or I'm going to ban you. Knock off the spamming or I will ban you. Um, also, pay attention to our Fitter and Faster social accounts. Um, we're going to be announcing all of our webinars there too. And William Hoover's getting banned now. All right. And for those of you wondering about how the core and everything ties together into the swimming, we are kicking off some dry land. Uh, so I believe those signups are either live or yep. coming online. Well, we Additional have uh, ones are coming online. We have live uh, online dry land sessions that you guys can check out on our website. Um, you'll also get emails with more of those sessions as they come available. Just make sure you go to our website and sign up for our mailing list. And, um, what else? Uh, we're doing giveaways next week. So next week we're trying to do another one of these freestyle, um, these freestyle endless pool events. And you're going to see some information coming out in the next couple of days on our social media. So if you share one of our posts, if you repost one of our story posts, if you comment on one of our, uh, one of our posts, You'll actually get entered to win a free gift card. And by the way, that gift card is based on the number of people that show up today. So if we get 500 people to show up on Friday, we're going to give away three $50 gift cards. If we get 1,000 people to show up on Friday, we're going to give away three $100 gift cards. Okay, so make sure all of your friends know that uh, if they come online with us and they share some stuff, you might get some free goodies from Fitter and Faster Tour. So that being said, y'all stay safe, stay positive. 
Um, keep a lookout for our future events and wash your dang hands. Bye Thanks now. Thanks for joining us. See ya.